This is section 4.8, Radical Equations and Power Functions. And I have put a chart here, some of the properties of rational ex exponents. We're just going to kind of go over a few of them that are worthwhile that you'll see in your homework. Um, specifically this one right here. When you have anything to the m over n, in other words, like 8 to the 2 thirds, Remember that the denominator becomes the index here. The numerator goes here. So that's the same thing as the cube root of 8 and then square it. The cube root of 8 is 2. 2 squared is 4. Now that's nice to know that you can switch from radical to exponential. We're going to be doing a lot of this on the calculator, but you do need to know that. This, pow this rule, power to power, you multiply those. So 2 to the 3 halves to the 4th means we're going to multiply 3 over 2 times 4. And remember that when you multiply a fraction times a whole number, you're just doing that. So it's 12 over 2, which is 6. 2 to the 6th is 64. All right. Number 4 talks about negative exponents. And negative exponents are about position. So if you have 4 to the negative 1 half, it's the same as 1 over 4 to the positive 1 half. If you're on the top, you go to the bottom. If you're on the bottom and it's negative, you go to the top in order to make it um, positive. All right. Number 5, when you are multiplying like bases, you can add the exponents. So when we have rational exponents, fractions here, we have 3 to the 5 halves times 3 to the 3 halves. You're going to add those together. That's 8 halves, which is 4. 3 to the 4th is 81. And when you divide like bases, you can subtract the exponents. So same thing. 5 to the 5 fourths minus 3 fourths gives you 5 to the 2 fourths, which is 5 to the 1 half. And any time you see something to the 1 half, it's the same thing as the square root of that number. All right, let's look at an example here about solving an equation containing a square root. All right, so this is your initial equation. x equals the square root of 15 minus 2x. When you have a square root, you want to square both sides to get rid of that radical. All right, so that's what I showed you here. We're going to square both sides. On the left, we end up with x squared. And on the right, when you square a radical, it goes away. So I've got 15 minus 2x. Then we're going to move everything to the left and get 0 on this side. So I did that with the red there. So now I have quadratic. I can factor and I get x equals negative 5 and x equals 3. You do have to check each answer when you have radical equations. So you test each answer and see if it makes a true statement. In this case it does. We may have some on the homework where it does not. If it does not, we're going to throw away that answer that doesn't check out. It's called an extraneous root and it won't be one of the answers that you would um, fill in the blank with. Okay. And the last thing that is in the notes is about a power function. And that's where you're raising the variable x to a power. Um, we're used to seeing x squared, but we could also see x to the 3 fourths, x to the 0. 0.4, the cube root of x squared, which remember is the same as x to the 2 thirds. So just to give you an idea of that, we may graph some of those. We may do a little work with them. All right, let's look at the problem set. All right, when we have negative 25 to the 1 half, you want to recognize this is not in parentheses, so this means the negative of, the negative of, we'll just say the square root of 25. That's easier to think about. Remember, 1 half power is the square root, so that's equal to negative 5. All right, so we got that. All right, number 2, 2 thirds to the negative 3. When you have an negative exponent and you've got a fraction, 
it's the same as you flip the fraction and then you have a positive exponent. All right, and so when we do that, you can cube the top and cube the bottom. So you're going to have 27 over 8. Okay. Number 3, evaluate the function f of x equals the 6 times the square root of x cubed for x equals 4. So that means I'm going to plug this 4 where x is. So I've got 6 times square root of 4 cubed which is 6 times the square root of 64, which is 6 times 8. So what's our answer there? 48. Solve the equation. So we'll get us a little room here. We're going to do those same steps that we did in the example. So we're going to square both sides. So we've got square root of x minus 7 squared equals x minus 9 squared. When we square this one, we're left with x square root, sorry, we're left with x minus 7 equals, and we're going to square this, and the shortcut for squaring a two term, a binomial, square this guy. The middle term is this times this times 2, so that's negative 9x times 2, that'd be negative 18x and square this one. Okay, now we're going to get everything on one side, so we'll subtract x, we'll plus 7, subtract x plus 7, so we have 0 equals x squared minus 19x plus 88. We're going to factor that. 11 and 8 give us 88 and 11 and 8 could give us 19. So we have x minus 11, x minus 8. And then we solve both of those. We get x equals 11, x equals 8. All right, now let's check both of those and see if they work. So when we're checking it, we've got the square root of 11 minus 7 equals 11 minus 9. So that's the square root of 4 equals 2, 2 equals 2, check. All right, let's try the other side. The square root of 8 minus 7 equals 8 minus 9. So that's the square root of 1 equals negative 1. So that's 1 equals negative 1. That does not work. So we discard that that discards that one, okay? So here in our answer, we would only put the 11. We would ignore the 8. All right, let's try number 5. Same idea. We're going to square both of these. Three. Badly made three. Okay, so over here we end up with 5x plus 29. And over here we have x squared plus 6x plus 9. And we're going to subtract here and here. We are left with 0 equals x squared plus x minus 20, and that factors to x plus 5 and x minus 4, so we have x equals negative 5, x equals 4. Alright, now we need to check them, so we're going to check them over here, square root of uh, 5 times negative 5 plus 29, that's all under the radical, equals negative 5 plus 3. So that is the square root of 4 equals negative 2. 2 equals negative 2. That does not work. 
so the negative 5 is going to get discarded. Let's check the other one. Square root of 5 times 4 plus 29 equals 4 plus 3. That is square root of 49 equals 7. 7 equals 7. That's correct. So our answer in the box would simply be the 4. Okay. All right, now get some room for number 6 because it's a little bit different. We've got a radical on each side and we have a number added on the left side. So when we go to square, let's do this. So we've got that squared. Now, when you square this times itself, you're going to just lose the radical. So we're going to have x plus 1 plus, remember this is this times this times 2. So that would be 2 times 3 is 6. We have 6 of these plus 9 equals, and we'll have 3x plus 4 here. All right, so let's get everything except the radical on the other side because we're probably going to have to square again. So let's subtract the x, subtract the 1, subtract the 9. Over here we've got a minus x and a minus 10. All right, so now we've got 6 square roots of x plus 1 equals 2x minus 6. And we're going to square again. Okay, so we'll take both of these and square. Because we still got to get rid of that radical. So 6 squared is 36 times, when you square that, you just have x plus 1 equals 4x squared minus 2x times 6 is 12x times 2 is 24x plus 36. All right. So <clears throat> over here we've got 36 X plus 36 equals this stuff. And we're going to get everything on one side. Minus that, minus that. Minus 36x minus 36. 0 equals 4x squared minus 60x. Now that's not a 3 term, so to factor that we want to take out anything that's common. We can take out a 4 and an x. And we're left with x minus 15. There's a factor there's a factor. This one, if you set it equal to 0, gives you x equals 0. If you set this one equal to 0, you get x is 15. You do have to test both of those, and when you do, and I will let you work on that, and you can see it on the lecture notes, but when you test it, um, the uh, zero does not work. So zero gets eliminated and the only answer will be the 15. All right, now this one looks a little bit different because we've got the cube root. So if you have the cube root of something, you want to cube it to get rid of that cube root. So when you cube it, all you're left with is x plus 4 equals, and 6 cubed is 216. You're going to subtract 4, and you get x is 212. So that would be that answer. All 
All right, evaluate f of x at the given x. So this one we're going to, and it says type an integer or a decimal rounded to the hundredths. So we're going to say that this is 45 to the 1 half plus 45 to the 3 halves. Oops. If we do that on the calculator, all right, so we're going to have 45 raised to the 1 divided by 2, so that's 1 half, then I'm going to tab over to get back down, plus 45 raised to 3 divided by 2, and we're going to hit enter, and we get this number, and it does say to round to the hundredths, so that's going to be 308.58. So that'll be that one, 308.58. But that's definitely a calculator question that could help you with that. All right, number nine is a graphing question, just to get you practiced on that. So when you go into the calculator, let's go in here. Let me turn this plot off and clear and clear. All right, so you want to go into Y1, do second and the X squared key, and that'll be the square root of X, and then the plus one is outside, so use your right arrow to come out from under the radical, and then it'll be plus one. All right, we're gonna do a zoom six, and we're trying to match. Whoops, we're not trying to do that. We just need to move over here so we can see which one that is. And I think you can tell it is letter B. And so we'll have this right here. So it's just that easy. And then on number 10, we're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna do that in the calculator. Um, let's go here, y equals, clear, and we're going to have x raised to 3 divided by 5, and tab over, and we'll have a plus 2, and we'll graph. Now, the thing that you have to be careful is that's not looking quite like that. Be sure that you look at the window. We have fours everywhere. So let's see if this changes some. We may can kind of guess where it is, but let's go to your window and do negative four, positive four, negative four, and a positive four. All right, now let's hit graph. And so now it looks more like this one right here. I mean, we probably could have told, but if you'll change the window to match your graph, then you'll be in better shape. So that should get you through the questions for 4.8.